Madam Speaker, I rise today to speak to uh, Bill C-250, presented in this House by my colleague from Saskatoon, Grasswood, and I thank him for that, and I thank other colleagues for their speeches uh, today. I rise to speak to this bill on the eve of Yom HaShoah, a day that commemorates the six million innocent Jewish men, women, and children who were systematically murdered by the Nazis during the Holocaust. On this day, Canadians across the country, on this eve, I should say, reflect on the unique horror of the Holocaust. They pay tribute to the innocent victims, that honor the survivors, and recognize the righteous who risked their own lives to save the lives of strangers. The Holocaust was one of the darkest chapters in human history, and on this day, we are presented with a sobering reminder of that history, which is why Yom HaShoah presents a fitting opportunity to debate this bill. And I'll admit this bill is not entirely clear-cut for me, nor for everyone in the largest Jewish community in Canada whom I have the distinct honour of representing in this House as the Member of Parliament for Thornhill. And it's not entirely clear-cut for those connected to the Holocaust directly, one generation removed, two generation removed, or indirectly as Canadians who on this day help dignify the memory of its victims, of the survivors, and of its unthinkable horrors. Madam Speaker, remembrance is at the core of this debate. Remembrance so that it never happens again. And for many, the protection and promotion of free speech is paramount. And given my own worldview, it's difficult to square the circle on the necessity in the face of ideological purity. But hate speech isn't free speech. And Madam Speaker, in an ideal world, Holocaust education, remembrance, and research would be sufficient to ensure a future where the denial of history would simply cease to exist. But sadly, that's not the case. There is an enormous amount of evidence of survivor testimony, of eyewitness accounts from those who liberated death camps. There are survivors among us still, our grandparents, our friends, those who bore witness to what had happened. And in the face of all of that, Holocaust denial and distortion persists. And because it persists, it is a necessity to fight with the tools of legislation when existing laws fail to protect the truth, the truth about the horrors of the Holocaust. Denial and distortion needs to be prosecuted successfully as a powerful deterrent to say that this isn't acceptable, this isn't okay, this isn't allowed in this country. Countering Holocaust denial and distortion is necessary to combat the efforts of those who blur the facts of what transpired about the, those complicit in the horrors of trying to rewrite history. We must combat the distortion that insults the victims and the survivors. We must combat that distortion that perpetrates anti-Semitism, and we must combat that distortion that fans the flames of violent extremism. We must combat that distortion not only for the Jewish community, but for the thousands of people who defied the rules set down by the Nazis, set down by Hitler, and collectively saved countless LGBT people, disabled people, Roma, and other minorities from certain death. The perversion of, the holo of, of, of Holocaust denial attempts to erase their bravery and their courage against Hitler and his followers. And we must combat the distortion so it, doesn't, so it doesn't threaten our own ability to understand the past and learn for it. And most importantly, we must combat the distortion so that the distortion doesn't become history itself. The bill ensures successful prosecution of neo-Nazi Holocaust deniers and, and in the end should aim to prevent the resurgence of Nazism. There is a rising tide of anti-Semitism. I've talked about it here in this House. I've talked about it outside of this House. And it's not just rising out of the far right. And it's not just rising out of the far left. It's rising out of faculty clubs. It's rising on our university campuses, out of social justice organizations, and out of those very close to government. There were 2,799 2, recorded in anti-Semitic incidents of hate in 2021. And one of the most common forms of that hate was attacking Jew, of attacking Jews was 
the denial and the distortion of the Holocaust. That's almost eight incidents that occurred every single day in 2021. That's a 59.8% increase from 2017 to 2021. Those numbers should be alarming to everybody in this place. And those aren't my statistics. They're from B'nai B'rith, most recent audit that we heard about this week. And there's no question that they are underreported. And that should be of, a concern, of concern. Mr. Speaker, the long history of the Jewish people has been characterized by as a repetitious cycle, eras of oppression and darkness interrupted by the all too brief golden periods of liberation and flourishing creativity. But as we know, the old anti-Semitism of persecution, of pogroms, of Nazi gas chambers has, mas mast mast <laughs> has become a new, more subtle, but just as dangerous cancer. It has an indirect genocidal goal that targets the Jewish national homeland. Its proponents vilify Israel because it's the home of the Jewish people. And while this bill doesn't address that fact, there is no question that it is a driver of hate leveled against the Jewish people, and it's difficult not to acknowledge in a conversation about anti-Semitism in this House. Members of this House, some members of this House, have been complicit in fanning those flames of rhetoric against Israeli statehood that fuel the pernicious rise of a new anti-Semitism cloaked in Zionism. And they say to those who fan those flames outside of this house that that's okay. Our former Prime Minister Stephen Harper talked about anti-Semitism in the speech at the Israeli Knesset, the first and only Canadian Prime Minister to do it. In that speech, he named a new anti-Semitism. It uses sophisticated language, words that are acceptable in polite society. The Prime Minister said this, I find it interesting that when I'm in Israel, I'm asked to single out Israel. When I'm in, in the Palestinian Authority, I'm asked to single out Israel. And when, half of the, uh, when I'm in half of the other places around the world, you ask me to single out Israel. The public displays of hate that we have seen lately across Canada have yielded no action. And that's why this bill is important. They have, incur they have been encouraged by those in this House and those close to it, and those in polite society, singling out Israel, as described by the PM in his speech, is okay. Madam Speaker, it was unacceptable to see the flag of the Hamas terror group at an anti-Israel protest in, in Toronto just before the last uh, election. Hamas calls for the genocide of Jews in its charter. Or, it was, or, or to see an anti-Israel manual sent uh, by, uh, to, the, to the country's largest school board uh, by somebody in the school board in Toronto. Or an overt... Uh, Jewish hatred of kids playing hockey for the Avenue Road Ducks in the largest organized sports league in the city that I'm from, or the countless swastikas drawn on schools and playgrounds and parks and in homes in my community and communities across the country, or an open display of anti-Semitism last week in the streets of Toronto as a pro-Palestinian rally cheered enthusiastically for rocket attacks on civilians. Or, 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 anti-Semitism dressed up as anti-Zionism and anti-Jewish statehood, and any suggestion that the two are separate is in fact part of the problem. Through this bill and the understanding that the Holocaust is a very unique history and its denial drives hatred, perhaps the next time some will choose principle rather than coddling the prejudice, next time the opportunity for courage presents itself, and that opportunity will come very soon. Mr. Madam Speaker, the law is necessary as the number of Holocaust survivors, eyewitnesses to the event, decline. And it recedes into history and it gets further and further away. And as these views are becoming more mainstream and they creep into popular culture, the law will be able to avoid the problem of proving the Holocaust in court before those who deny it are held to account. Members should be aware that this proposal has found its way into the budget. Seven years of inaction which has seen anti-Semitism become an even more pervasive problem in this country. I hope that this is not theater. I hope that you will support, that members of this House will support this bill. And from what I've heard tonight, I think that is the case. So I'll certainly, uh, I will certainly trust the intentions of, of, of what is in uh, the budget, but I hope that members will support this bill. Madam Speaker, I will end with this. 
Ignorance fuels intolerance. And like my colleague said, education is the safeguard of history, and we must continue to teach the truth. The passage of this bill will protect that truth. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The, the time provided for the consideration of private members' business has now expired, and the order is dropped to the bottom of the order of precedence.